Hey there friends, in this video I want to introduce you to Pandoc, a tool that takes Markdown and turns it into literally any other type of document that you want. Let's dive in. So I have been looking for a tool that would allow me to take Markdown and convert it into an ebook and PDF. Now the reason that I'm interested in this is I just finished a 25 day course on React uh, at React dot holiday and I want to make that available as an ebook to those people who fully finish the course um, something that they can kind of download have on hand and go through the content again if they need to or just use it as a resource so I thought it'd be fun something that I don't know how to do and I thought it'd be fun to learn how to do it and uh, start adding that to my arsenal of skills now I tried a handful of tools that just didn't quite work for me um, a couple of those just, you know, so you do don't have to dive into those. Um, I tried Softcover, um, which is a really interesting uh, type of platform that allows you to produce books. However, the, the tools seemed out of date and I couldn't find a reasonable Ruby version that allowed me to actually install and run the tool. So that was a no-go from the beginning. Um, I also looked at LeanPub, which is another platform where you can publish books. Now, I'm not actually interested in publishing my book to LeanPub. I just want to have it as a PDF that I can offer um, on uh, one of the platforms that I already have or deliver videos on. Uh, so I just wanted the, the book and it. I can't tell, but it seems like the licensing doesn't allow me to use the platform to make a book and then sell it somewhere else. So I didn't want to mess with that. Uh, so I landed on Pandoc. Pandoc is um, an open source tool that you can use to uh, convert Markdown or any type of file really um, to any other type of file, um, hence the name Pandoc. So we're gonna dive into this today. So let's do it. Okay, so first and foremost, you're gonna find everything that you need to know on pandoc.org. That is the site where you can find all the documentation and demos for Pandoc. Now it is, um, can be a little bit challenging getting started. There's a lot of things that you need to know. So hopefully this will guide you through that process. Um, so and cut that time uh, down dramatically. I'm gonna minimize that. Um, first thing we're gonna do is if you have Homebrew installed, we can install Pandoc with Homebrew. That's my preferred way. However, there's other ways on their installation page. So let's do brew install uh, Pandoc. And as with all brew installations, you'll need to run brew doctor or brew update first. Um, to make sure that everything is installed. Now, I already ran this installation just a little bit ago, um, and so I have Pandoc here already. Now, here we should be able to type which Pandoc and see that we have Pandoc um, from Brew. If you don't see this, you can open up a new tab and try which Pandoc again. And um, sometimes when you open up a new shell or terminal or whatever the terminology is, um, it will source properly in a way that you didn't when you just in installed it. So that's the first thing. Now, the cool thing is right out of the gate, Pandoc can be used just as a bare command. So if we type Pandoc, um, it's not very clear, but it opens up a Pandoc shell for us and we can start typing in Markdown. Now, the default input source for Pandoc is Markdown. So without any configuration, it's going to accept Markdown and then convert it to HTML. That's the default output. So. Let's uh, put some stuff in here. So, hello, friends. Um, we'll do some asterisks uh, for, oh, I didn't spell that right. Oh my gosh. See, this is already a really terrible uh, way to, to write any content, but it's an okay demo. So, hello, friends. Um, we'll do a couple enters. Let's add a list. One, uh, two, three, and a hyperlink. So, love. Chan, chan.dev. Okay, cool. So we're gonna do that. And then in this command, I could do control C or control Z to get out of this. But if I want it to actually process this information, uh, we're going to do control D and that will end Pandoc. I don't want end it, but it'll terminate Pandoc. Um, it'll take whatever we had typed in this terminal and then spit it out as HTML. That's super cool. So Pandoc out of the box takes Markdown and turns it into HTML. Now, this isn't a super great workflow. So how can we improve this workflow? Well, 
first things first, um, I think the first thing that we'll want is to have a markdown file. How can we use uh, markdown files as input? So let's do that. Let's um, make a markdown file. Uh, let's take what we have here and put it inside of a markdown file. So we'll do, we'll call this, um, you know, my source.md. And we'll just paste what we have in there, write that. And now we can give pandoc markdown files as source. So we can say pandoc and then just give it a, a path. So my source MD and we get the same output, um, but this time from a source file. So that's really cool. Um, but uh, you know, having just spit out to the console is not super helpful. So what can we do after this? Well, Pandoc has an output option as well. We can uh, use the option output right here, um, or we can also use dash O for short. So we're gonna do dash O and we can just put it anywhere. So we'll do this my book dot HTML. Okay, cool. And then let's cat my book dot HTML to make sure that it all worked. Okay, cool. So now everything is in that HTML file and uh, we piped it into that file using the dash O or dash dash output option. Now, next things next, Pandoc doesn't just do markdown to HTML conversion. It actually will allow you to uh, convert things bi-directionally, which is really neat. Um, and we have two handy uh, options for that. We have a from and a to, which allow us to describe what the syntax is that we are um, converting something from and what we want it to. So let's use that now. We'll do um, pandoc. This time what we'll do though, is we'll use the HTML um, my book .html. So this is an HTML file. We got this from pandoc, but now we want to convert it to something else. Um, we'll say we want it from, or we can use dash F for short, um, from HTML and to, or dash T for short, um, markdown. And just so we don't confuse things with the my source dot markdown file, uh, we're gonna change this. Actually, this needs to be markdown, full on markdown. Um, we're gonna change this to my book MD. Actually, we can just use an MD extension there. Okay. Oh, uh, let's see. Pandoc, my book.md binary does not exist. Okay. I did something wrong. Um, yeah, that's right. I need to put this as the output. So Pandoc will take a um, source files as the input. And so anything that we uh, kind of put bear here, um, just through pandoc and then file names, any file names that we put in here, it's going to try to read from. So I need to put this O output flag here to say, no, this is actually the output that I want. This isn't another file that we're trying to read from. So uh, hit that, that worked. Um, and then let's cat my book.md and see that we have markdown again. Now, the cool thing is that this markdown was actually transformed via Pandoc from HTML. So we went initially from markdown to HTML and then from HTML to markdown. So Pandoc is pretty cool. I'm like super impressed. Now we can do all kinds of things if we want to. We could, um, uh, you know, even indifferent to the extension that we're using here, we could um, do something like uh, if we want to convert this to a doc X, I don't know why you would want to do that, but if you wanted to make a Microsoft doc file out of this um, and then put it in a dot MD extended file, uh, just because you like watching the world burn, you can do that. So I'm going to show you that you can do that. And if we cat this, my book uh, dot MD file again, um, we'll see that it's a bunch of gobbledygook that only Microsoft uh, Word knows how to understand. Uh, so that's a thing you can do. Now, this brings up an interesting point is how many formats, like what can you do? What is available to you? Uh, well, if you go into the uh, pandoc.org, um, go to documentation, and then uh, I'm sure it's in here somewhere. Uh, user guide. 
and then we go to options. Um, you can see all of the formatting options here. So there's a lot of really cool formatting options, and they also have multiple markdown parsers um, that you can use if you don't like the, the default uh, Pandoc markdown processor. Okay, now I want to show you a cool um, option for generating standalone pages. So uh, if we jump up here to a few commands back, um, we generated a mybook.html. But what if we wanted to make um, a full site from a markdown file? So we could do my site right here um, and use .html. So we're going to generate that to HTML. We'll cat my site to see uh, what was um, put out there. And we see that it's just the um, markup that we wrote in our file. Well, there's a really cool option where we can do dash S. Oh, that's not the command I want to do that on. We can use dash S and that stands for uh, dash or for the standalone option uh, right here. Now we can use dash dash standalone or we can just use dash S for short. What this does is it will actually wrap up the whole document inside of an HTML wrapper, which is super cool. Um, so let's cat that and see what we got. And we'll come back to that error in just a second. So cat uh, my site.html. And we can see there's a bunch of stuff with styles and um, regular HTML, etc. Now we did have this um, warning and says to, spe uh, let's see, defaulting to my source as the title. Now by default, it will use the name of the file. It, so it'll use an H1 if you have an H1 as the name of the document. If you don't, it'll try to use the name of the file. In this case, it's telling us that it's using my source as the name, the title of the document. And that's not super ideal, but it's the, it's the default. However, we can further specify some metadata with this dash dash meta option. And so we can do it just like this. So it tells us exactly what we need to do if we want to create a title. So um, just to show you what's happening, it's using the file name in the title of this HTML document. Now that's probably not ideal. Um, so we can use this um, and we will run our command again. So again, pandoc mysource.md. We want our output to be my site.html and uh, we want it to be standalone. So it includes all the HTML. And then we're going to use metadata. So metadata, or it can do a capital M, I believe. So we use a capital M for that. And then we'll paste in, oh, actually, that's not what I want. Um, paste in like that. And we'll call this my great website. Hit enter. We don't get the error this time, which is a good thing. And so now if we cat this out, we will see again all of our content nested inside this template. And let's go up to the top, my great website. So super cool way to do that. Now, if you're using Markdown though, you have access to this very cool thing called front matter in Markdown, which allows you to incorporate a lot of YAML metadata in a block at the top of your file. So I wanna explore that. If we go into our file, vim dot, uh, what was it my source? So get a lot of files now. So if we open up this, um, we can go to the top and introduce some YAML metadata. The benefit of this is that we can include all of this inside of our document instead of having to add that in the command. So let's just do something like this. So title uh, my my great website. I'll put an exclamation point just to make sure that we're seeing the one that we're putting inside of the YAML metadata. We'll write that here and then run our command again. So we're going to do, actually, let's write this fresh. So we'll do pandoc, pandoc, my source. We want the output to be my site.html. We want that to be a standalone site. So it wraps it inside of a template. And um, actually we don't need to apply metadata this time because well, it's just gonna work. Uh, so we'll hit that. We didn't get the warning and that's a good thing because we have the data that we need inside of our YAML uh, front matter block. And uh, let's cat this uh, my site again. If we did everything right, we should see a title and it should have those extra, extra, extra exclamation points uh, that we had. Um, and there we go. 
super cool. So those are some really neat things that you can do uh, in converting Markdown to pretty much any format you want. Now let's play with one last thing because this is really the uh, kind of the beginning of what I was hoping to accomplish that with this, which is to generate eBooks. So let's try that. Um, so we're gonna run pandoc on our my source file. Okay, that part is right so far. We want the output to be an EPUB book. Um, now, uh, let me just put that. So my book dot book dot e pub. Now we could be very explicit and set the to format to EPUB. And then it looks like there's EPUB, uh, EPUB, EPUB two, EPUB three. So this could be super valuable if you uh, want to specify which one of these EPUB formats um, is actually useful to you. Um, however, it can also just infer from this suffix that we want to create an EPUB. So let's try that. And it seems to have worked. Now we can't just oh, like in uh, cat the EPUB and see the text because it's a you know proprietary format or something like that. But or is it is it a proprietary? It's like an open source format, but it's like a binary format, so you can't like just see the text. I'm not sure exactly. However, I think um, we can open it in my books, so or ebooks or iBooks or whatever it is. So if we open, um, let's see, my book.epub. It'll probably launch iBooks. I don't know what this is going to look like, what kind of books are in there. Um, cool. So it just opens up my book. It has that title. Um, it's so confused right now because it's opening for the very first time in a very long time. Um, so there it is, my great website. Obviously, this title doesn't make a lot of sense anymore, but you can see that that metadata actually transferred to this um, ebook. You can find it on pandoc.org. There's a bunch of information on um, uh, both templates and ebook metadata that you would want, you know, like copyright, author, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's really cool. Um, you know, just for the heck of it, let's try one last thing. Um, we're going to edit my source and we're going to add an author if I can spell that right just to show you okay we'll generate that EPUB again uh, open it again and it should now have the author which is super super cool uh, so yeah that's pretty much it the last thing I want to show you is just that I have in addition and in preparation for this video, um, made a little site, uh, made a little page on my website, um, chan.dev slash notes slash pandoc. Um, and it has a lot more information on um, specific things that you may need to know um, and links to the uh, uh, requisite options and um, APIs. So a bunch of really cool stuff there if you're interested. Thanks so much for being here. I hope that this was helpful to you. I know it's going to be helpful to me in generating eBooks um, from Markdown that I already have in the form of newsletters. So super excited to start being able to produce those for you. Let me know if that's something that you're interested in. Uh, you can hit me up on Twitter at Chantastic. Um, and that's that, that. That's it. Thanks for thanks for being here. If you like this from me, hit like. If you didn't like it, hit unlike, dislike. I didn't like this. And let me know why you hate Pandoc so much. Because, I don't know, it looks pretty friggin' awesome to me. Uh, if you're new here, uh, please consider subscribing and uh, hitting the bell notification if you want to get more insights like this on a semi-weekly basis. Anyway, that's it. I hope you have a great weekend and a happy new year. Peace.